Welcome to the Get Your Life Show. I am Charmaine Johnson Fuller, life strategist with The Charm Life. And I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy life to come and hang with me and today a friend. The Get Your Life Show is about helping entrepreneurial moms squash the overwhelm they feel with all of the moving pieces in their life. Each episode shares actionable steps to improve one major life area to help you create the life balance you need to live a life you love. And today, I have my fabulous sister friend, Imani. I call her the relationship marriage whisperer. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the support that she offers to married couples to help them find their happy space, whatever that looks like for them, is so important. And Imani, I would like for you to introduce yourself a little bit more and kind of more than my fangirl thing of what you do, but <laughs> what you do and how you serve. Hello, hey ladies out here living your charm life <laughs> with Charmaine. Um, thank you so much for having me. So I am, I'm a lover of purple. I am a free spirit, a po free and poetic spirit with some organizational type A tendencies. And I'm a, <laughs> I'm a mom to a four year old, soon to be five year old. Huh? Girl. Yes, November, she'll be five. Um, a little girl named Sovereign. And I'm a wife. And yeah, as you said, I am a marriage coach. I'm out here helping married folk um, really master communication and what that looks like in their marriage. So, you know, they can have that peace and that freedom, you know, and that partnership that they want and that doesn't fall, you know, fall under the radar for them. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to talk with you today about that because we're talking about this off the camera. And I'm like, we got to yeah. get on camera and talk about yes. this piece of yeah. communication and partnership, which is what yeah. I think most people when they get married, they don't think of marriage, like I always, now I say it, like I used to say it as a joke, but now I really get it, that marriage is a business. And mm -hmm. not from the standpoint of being cold and calculated, but mm -hmm. it's a corporation. You've got a CEO, everybody has their role. Mm -hmm. You um, need to communicate. Like the CFO can't just go off and buy a Learjet and the workers ain't got paid. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. That marriage really is that piece where you have to communicate because if you don't, then everything falls apart. You think about a business where somebody is not saying, oh, by the way, I didn't file taxes for the last five years and now the, everybody's going to prison. Yeah. You know, how and how difficult that can be based on how some of us grew up and how to right. change that. How do you right. create that in your, you know, in your life? Yeah. That's, you know, the first time I heard that marriage is a business, I heard it from my husband. And I was like, you know, I was curious. I was like, what, you know, because I was thinking, you know, because of my own energy being, even though I've run a business, <laughs> I do have that free spiritedness. And so relationships to me have always been like this really beautiful, fluid thing. And yes, there's commitment, but I, I was just curious at the time, like, what do you mean by that? And it was very similar to what you're saying about, you know, it is, it's, it's this agreement that you make. And the nuance in that that I heard is like, look, the things that we do when we go through as individuals affect, you know, exactly. our successes. And a lot of times, even as marriages, we tend to retreat. We tend to not say certain things that we need to say for whatever the reason. You don't want to rock the boat. You know, you don't want to, to start anything. You don't want to feel dismissed. We all have our reasons for why you don't step up and, and communicate in the way that you really need to in your marriage and in your relationship. But if you were dealing with from the business aspect, you can't keep those things to yourself. You would share them because everyone's affected. This is the success of the business and it's also the success of the marriage. So I'm, I'm with it. I'm with you on that. So thinking about communication and just how I know for women that are in business, men think differently than what that was one of the hardest lessons that I learned is that, you know, in that respect, I'm like, you know, oh my God, I can see the possibilities and it's just so fabulous. And my husband is like, okay, but what are the numbers? I'm like, well, I'm just getting started in the possibilities. And he's like, okay, well, call me when it's making some money or like, you know, so. <laughs> 
and it felt dismissive. And what I had to learn is that it wasn't that he was being dismissive of me or of my passion or of my dream. It's just that for him, it wasn't real until it gained numbers because it's not his dream. And, you know, talking to women about how to convey that and not take that personally, because it's really hard when it's your baby and, you know, like I, I birthed this dream yeah. and he's saying, whatever, like, <laughs> like yeah. what am I supposed to do with that? Yeah, no, that is, it's a tough place to be in, but you're, you're, you're right. It's, it's your dream it's not theirs and it is something that affects them right and so right. they're looking at it from many or many men even if they're not even in situations that i've seen where the wife is the financial provider right or the is making more money in terms of you know the dollars and cents of it the the mindset that i often see is still like okay well what's this bringing in and what does this look like and how is this a business you know what i mean right that part of it and if you take it back to the marriage as a business or thinking about your work environment or your business and the people that you work with if they were if something went you know awry <laughs> or if you want the business to grow you're going to share with them hey you know this is this is the plan or you know what i need to get a plan for that I and mean, i know i need a plan to make the money i have the vision i have the big picture and that's not there's nothing wrong with sharing that part though you know what i mean and even requesting like hey I, I hear you and I see you and I'm, I'm getting to the numbers, you know, that's important right. to me too. Um, I'll even, you know, and some of you may even be like, I'll talk to you about it. Like, what do you think about this in terms of moving in, in marketing? It depends on the kind of relationship that you have, but it's okay to request that, Hey, you know, I, I just want to share the big vision for you and this is coming, but you have to understand that that's another important part of the business that they will want to hear from. Cause they're like, Oh, I get this part. This is great. And because real talk, often we're spending money before we're making it. <laughs> and in my case, I was spending, I was spending the money that, even though it's our money, I was spending the money that my husband was making to build my business. So we would have a conversation. Yeah. Raise your hands, ladies. Even if you just, we having a conversation with you. So right. even if you got, just raise your hand. If this was, was you. My, my investor. Yeah exactly and if you're dealing with an investor you're going to talk to your investor about what the plan is with the money and right. how you're going to make money and how you're going to gain clients and it's not just the pretty graphics and it's not just the website it's not just the logo i still don't have an official logo you know what i'm saying and it's been a few years that has not been the thing that has sustained a business that was that's making anything right and so um we have to be able to share those things like you said without taking it personally because they want to see you be successful as well and a lot of times that success is going to center around how do you grow it financially as well i think we think we believe that as well we know it so yeah sharing that's really really important sharing the big vision but also sharing the dollars and cents of it and what that plan is that was one of the scariest parts for me because when he asked me that question i immediately got offended mm -hmm. not because he asked me but because my ass didn't have no numbers. I was floating on the cloud and I was just doing a whole bunch of stuff and I, I didn't have the analytics behind it. Like, you know, I was making some money, but nothing was really consistent. And yeah. it really, really what I was spending was in no way, shape or form close, you know, or what, it, it just wasn't, things weren't adding up. And I knew they weren't adding up, but for him to bring it out, felt like an attack because I was already attacking myself for right. not knowing the numbers. Right. And I know a lot of women end up in that space like, oh my God, he's not supportive. And there are some people that aren't supportive and it's because it's not their dream. Doesn't mean they don't love you any less, but they like, okay, look, I'm gonna need you to get a job, you know? And that was one of the conversations we had, like after I had spent so much of his money. <laughs> 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 right now you like girl i don't know i knew them numbers girl I was like, Get up. so much of his money he was like you're gonna have to get a job and i was so offended imani i was offended that he would make me get a job just basically support my habit because again mm -hmm. i was making money but it wasn't consistent so it was like a hobby that i went to the craft show 
on the weekend to make a couple of dollars to buy more supplies. And then <laughs> like, it wasn't really a business. Yeah. And so I had to sit in that. I went to therapy for that. Cause I'm like, this is not fair. You're so mean. And she was like, well, okay, well let's break it down. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of mad at her then, but I'm like, oh my gosh, like if this was reversed or if I went to a bank, there would be no way mm -hmm. that a bank would be like, girl, here you go. Here $3,000. Go ahead. Do whatever you want to do with it. Don't come back with no reports. We don't want it back. Nothing like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think a lot of the times we don't get that. And we think that someone's not supporting us because they're asking us questions yeah. that make us ask ourselves questions to get honest with ourselves. And that's what a good spouse is supposed to do, I believe. They're yeah. supposed to ask you questions at times that make you think, maybe even piss you off a little bit, but definitely make you think. If you think about it, you'll go, well, wait a minute. If I did this, how, if he did this to me, how would I react? Like if he just went off and, you know, started something that had no type of plan in place, would I be as supportive? And for me, the answer is like, nope, not, not with my money. Nope. And it's like, <laughs> okay, but he's being this giving mm -hmm. and not saying that it's his money, but still right. it's the family's money. Like the money right. that I spent could have went on other things for the family, mm -hmm. but he believed in my dream to just hand over his, the money that he worked for. Yeah. And I yeah. think we don't see our spouses as investors. Sometimes we just see it as kind of something they're supposed to do because they love us. Right. And that, ain't, that ain't so. <laughs> Yeah. And they invest in a lot of ways. There's time, there's energy. I mean, you, you want to be honest with yourself about as investors, how they're investing, you know, right. it's me, but it might also be energy. It might also be time. I know with my husband, if I had clients or if I was doing, you know, a webinar, yeah. he was the one watching sovereign, you know what I mean? He was the one making dinner that night. Um, and it, he likes to cook and God, so he, you know, he cooks whatever, but it would feel like this is a new element. Now that I'm doing this, things will shift. It didn't just shift for me, it shifted for him as well. So we don't always look at it that way. And yes, that is, that is also an element of support. So you have to really get down into what support looks like, you know, for you when you're talking about your spouse, when you're talking about your husband. For me, I remember feeling a lot of guilt. Um, I had several guilt conversations with my husband of like, my business is making a lot of money, you know, and like, he was at a job that he would have rather kind of gone and done his own thing, but, and it was just, it was a lot. He would be like, no, it's okay. You know, look that you're doing, you know, he would say that, but it was still challenging for me. I had to get to a place for myself um, around what it is that I was feeling guilty about. And was I moving and hustling as hard as I could, you know, with, with Sovereign and with everything. And I've talked to other women who felt guilty about that too, when they're, just starting their business and sometimes that makes you feel like you can't say i would like more or i i, I would i would like this or request certain things but you have to have that honest conversation with your with with your spouse with your partner and like you said understand that this is that we're we're being triggered it's you yeah. know with our own stuff and so if they're asking us questions the our response is coming from like the digging in the wound it's like right. you feel like you're not doing enough and you Here's know somebody asking you a question that you right. don't even that you ain't doing enough that's like one right. of the things he's like why are you always reading into my questions yeah that's not what i meant right <laughs> that's like one of the biggest things yeah. so how do how do women like start that conversation because that's a hard conversation to have if you've never I know when I first thought about it um you know I was working with a coach and she was like well you're gonna have to talk to your husband like he's a business partner mm -hmm. I'm like what I don't, uh. it's so, not business. <laughs> right so I literally spent I overthought it because I spent like a month in my head and I did all these charts and graphs and I made it look really really, oh, really? Yes, oh. I made it look really, really pretty. And he sat there for like 30 minutes like a deer in headlights. And what I discovered is men just want the summary most of the yeah. time, especially yeah. when it comes to your business. If it's not something that they're physically like into, they pretty much want the summary. What are you working on? You know, how many hours a month do, I, do you need me? That made right. me think about how many hours a month I wanted to work too. Yeah. When could the family expect this? Like I had to communicate with people. Yeah. So how do you suggest that women get started in that? 
Um, I mean, it's, it, there's a variety of ways, but I think that having knowledge gives you a jumping off point. So even if you're asking your spouse, like, hey, what do you think about my business? And being prepared and ready <laughs> to hear what they, <laughs> what they have to say, because knowing that what they're saying is giving you some information, like, you know, right. uh, you know, and, and then giving them permission to be honest, like, look, I know maybe it's been rough in the past. I know it's been rough in the past. I haven't been very open to your feedback, okay? And really say that, you know, stepping to the plate of taking responsibility of how you have blocked the communication, okay? How, how you've contributed to that. Um, we got to get real honest with ourselves around that aspect of it. And then giving the space to be like, okay, so you can be honest. Like, what do you think? And if they're saying, hey, it felt like more of a hobby. I feel like I don't really know what you're doing. I don't even understand what it is that you do. And then you can start to, that's the springboard yeah. conversation. You start to fill in those gaps. And if you don't know, you find them asking something or saying something like, you know what? I really don't know the answer to that question, but I'm going to find out. And you're not just finding out for them, like you're saying, Shaman, you're finding out for you and your business because you need that. Yeah. And you'd be surprised that a lot of times their input is helpful their perspective is really helpful. Like, dang, I didn't even think about that. Like, for real? Okay, let me go and do X, Y, and Z. So it's, don't put a lot of pressure on, like, oh my God, you put a lot of pressure on yourself, girl. You had charts and graphs. Yeah, I, I put way too much pressure on it. A lot of pressure. But don't, you know, let's try not to, and I get it too, I'm an over, overthinker um, as well, but try not to put too much pressure on yourself. Just, it, and the one thing that helps is to let it be, like, let them say what, what they think first and then and let, let them it. say what they're looking for because yeah. what I did is I tried to he calls me a chess player I tried to anticipate mm. the questions he would ask so I had all of that stuff prepared like that was great in corporate like in corporate that worked perfect mm -hmm. I'm just that girl but like when you're dealing with another human within the confines of a marriage right like just let them ask the questions if yeah. you're prepared for it great like i don't like being unprepared mm -hmm. so it was like i tried to have everything prepared and i didn't need 98 <laughs> percent like <laughs> i didn't need it like all i need to do is say well this is what i'm doing what do you like you said what do you need to know yeah what do you need to know and then i give him what he needs to know to make the decisions that he feels like he needs to make I've also discovered that telling him about my business is also like, you know, they, we talk about consent in so many different ways. Like sometimes we don't give people the full picture because we're looking for a particular answer and, or we're looking for a particular response, if not even an answer, a particular response. And right. so we tell them what we think will elicit the response that we want and not the full picture because, does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, Girl. So, so in doing this, you have to be prepared to not get the response mm -hmm. that you want. Yeah. And dealing with another human, you ain't going to necessarily get the response that you want. No. You're <laughs> not, but see, you're not, you're not asking for the response you want. You're asking for the truth. You have to come in right. with a goal of discovery. This is like a discovery situation. You're not leading the witness. This isn't like, <laughs> this isn't like. <laughs> in the courtroom, you know, like you, you really want to be in a position that feels comfortable, that feels partnered. And you may not, to truth, you may not like the response. Yeah, and yeah. that's the reality of your whole marriage. And many things that will come up where you're not happy about the response, they're not happy about the response. I can think of a couple off my top of my head where I was like, what, you know, and just because I wasn't as enthusiastic as he might have thought I was going to be, or I expressed it a little differently or what have you. So those things happen, but leaving yourself room to kind of clear things up when there's misunderstandings, to come to the space with the goal of discovery and not of anything else, not of like, I'll, I hope he says this, because then, but if he says this, I'm out. You know, like, <laughs> like you have, like, the pick your own adventure. Like, if he goes, hey, it's going to go this way. If he goes, That's hey. how calculated I tend to be. Like, mm -hmm. I always, you know, one of the things that I'm working on is I'm always trying to predict and control the outcome, mm. which is exhausting. Mm. But, you know... I find that that's what it is. This is exhausting and you can never, when you're dealing with another human being, when it comes to numbers, sure, you can predict yeah. and control outcomes when it comes to another human being. 
I had to learn that you cannot predict or control the outcome, mm -hmm. period. And that you're going to drive yourself crazy doing it. So I've had to learn how to be more curious and ask questions and go, okay, so what would you like to know? Mm -hmm. Like even like I do the money at home and there's just some things that he's not interested in. Now, is he interested in knowing about it? But it's just, he is, but just let me know where to find it. Like he doesn't need me to tell him. He just needs to know where to find it. And then he comes to me to ask questions. Yeah. And for some people that doesn't work. Like they want their, they want, they believe they want their spouse to be all the way in. Mm -hmm. But like for us, he's like, okay, I get the gist of it. Just point me to the, where the rest of the information is. I'll check on it. If I have any questions, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. And I, that's just how he rolls. But I'm just so calculated. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're right. It's exhausting. But when, if you're anything like me, when you're exhausted, you are easily frustrated. Yes. Be annoyed. So it, it, I mean, puts up your anxiety it like it, yeah. it knocks it all the way up there yeah so then the conversation can the possibility zero to a thousand right <laughs> is higher yep. so it, that's why we take the pressure off that's why exactly what you're saying ask the questions take the pressure off um doesn't mean you're not going to be misunderstood like that was my trigger like no no no, no you know and I, we had to have some conversations around that so we knew how to navigate that but just kind of let it go. And I, I think it's a dangerous place that like you said the, um, the expectation of, oh crap, what did you say? I had the things blown into my head. Which but I was like, when, when we're trying to um, control the, control the situation. Control, control the outcome and you're trying yeah. to control the, like what you Oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> it was like you said, we want them to be all in. Yeah. Right. And I think that still goes along the lines of the expectation of, and that's a, that can be a dangerous place because oh, yeah. you have, and I love what you said that works for you and, and Marcus, because you, you have your strength. He has his, and you guys were comfortable with that. And a lot of times when we're dealing in our relationships, we don't play to our strengths. We want our spouse to also have our strength and to like do the things that we do. And this is how we show that we're a team. But if we take it back to running a business, like you said in the beginning, like, and you're from corporate and I used to work in corporate too. We had a team, none of us did the same thing. No. We all had the same goal, but we didn't do the same thing. If we had a project, we, we, we split it up based upon what we did. What our strengths were. And you know, a big part of that, one of the conversations that he and I had a few years back, is um, we were reevaluating our marriage was well, what do you want a marriage to look like you know not what you've seen not what you've heard not what you have read about not what you've seen somebody else do but what do you want for your marriage for our marriage to look like mm -hmm. and so that was one of the things that we had to have this conversation about okay well this is what I do well this is what you do well and to be okay with that because if you let the gram and the Facebook tell you, everybody's supposed to be these equal, happy partners. Like, I think we get equal partnership confused, just like we get the word balance confused. It doesn't mean that everybody is doing the same thing. It means that you're doing your thing at 100%. I'm doing my thing at 100% most of the time. Mm -hmm. And we meet and we support each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what the equal partnership is. It isn't, I'm good with money, so you got to be good with money too. No, it's like, I'm good with money, but he's good with emergency situations. Like, mm -hmm. you know, again, I'm a planner. Mm -hmm. If something happens that's an emergency, I freeze because I didn't plan for that. Mm -hmm. Whereas he can jump into action. He's really clear. He's able to get us out the muck. Yeah. But me, I'm like... I, I, I don't know. I didn't plan for this. Like, what, did, is there like even did I? Is there a blueprint? What did I do? <laughs> and that that's a beautiful thing to be in that space. I think that's really challenging for folks. I yeah. think you have to get to that place for you and what works for you in your marriage without that expectation that your your spouse is going to do as you do. And if <laughs> we're be honest, that's what that is. Like, you need to do. I, why don't you budget like me? You know. Well. I, you know, I'm kind of learning it. I'm picking up some things, but that's not my strength. That's not how my brain work, you know, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't put that on, let's say, well, hopefully in a good school, like if you have children and they're in school, ideally they all think different ways and they, they move and they learn in different ways. And we're not trying to make them learn in this way. You know what I'm saying? And if their interest is here, 
they're going to keep going with that interest. Right. You know, that's and as you get higher in school, when you get to college, you pick a major, you just go with that interest. Like I'm not doing physics anymore, and that's not what I chose. You know, so you go with what you, you're interested in, you're passionate about, and we don't necessarily allow that room in our marriages because it doesn't look traditional, it doesn't look yeah. comfortable or equal. Which I'm putting in quotes because I was like, right. what is that? Um, so exactly what it is as you said, and looking at those strengths playing to those strengths and not caring about what it's quote unquote supposed to be what actually works for you in your marriage it makes it easier to have conversations that way oh yeah people don't feel inadequate because think about it, I was like you don't do this and you don't do that and then you're like oh, you know people start to get small in a relationship that feels small when that happens and along those same lines you know this is why i maybe i'm biased i think women have this worse than men because we'll ask our husbands to do something and they'll do it. And it doesn't look like how we would do it. And mm -hmm. then we go back behind them and we redo it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so demeaning. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's just frustrating. I remember I did that to my, like I used to do that a lot when we first got married and it was about the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so one day he just stopped. He was like, F it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I said, well, and you know, so versus me asking him, well, why aren't you cleaning the kitchen anymore? Mm -hmm. I just started cleaning the kitchen, being pissed off and cleaning the kitchen until, you know, women, when you do stuff outside of your lane that you ask somebody else to do versus applying the boundary, you end up blowing up and then going to Yale. So right. that's what happens. I blew up. I went, I said, well, why don't you clean the kitchen anymore? He's like, well, why should it be clean, clean twice? Like I clean it. You don't like it. And then you re-clean it. So I figured why should both of us have to clean it? So <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. Like, I didn't even notice I was doing that. I'm like, okay, he didn't do this right. Like, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I don't feel like I can do anything right. right. And sometimes when you don't allow for that space and for people to do things, to let the men parent, men parent differently. They mm -hmm. parent so much differently than us. Mm -hmm. And giving your husband that space to mm -hmm. let it look like how it's supposed to look like with him and then how it looks like with you. Yeah. You know, and that that takes that comes with conversation. Yeah, you know, in time, and it's a process, and it's yeah. ongoing. Um, I was looking at my dishwasher today, like my husband puts these the dishes in the dishwasher so different, but I didn't change anything. I'm like, no. okay, it's still gonna get clean, you know. Um, but it, it takes it takes time to to get to a place of like there is no right way to do it. There's a way you would have done it, and there's a way that somebody else would have done it. Why would they do it the exact same way as you, <laughs> right? I, it's again like that. You have to really sort of something like, did I was I expecting to marry myself? Like, what, what is that? <laughs> we just have to be honest with ourselves about that. But I think what overall what we're saying about creating a, a marriage that really works for you. And that you'll have to break out of boxes that you've put yourself in possibly unconsciously or inadvertently to really achieve that for yourself in your marriage. Um, that that's, that's real, you know, to, to do that, that we, we need to do that together. together. Yeah. It's big. Indeed. And it takes work and it takes courage. It takes a lot of courage mm -hmm. to just take action. Because it's, it's going to be taking, marriage is about taking imperfect action on a moment by moment basis. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a series of, like you said, research and development. And <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it though? As soon yeah. as you're like, oh, we got it. We good. Something throws a monkey wrench in it. Yeah. And you have to have an uncomfortable conversation. Again, like a business, there are times where things shift and you have to have these uncomfortable conversations mm -hmm. to make sure the team is still in the same bookstore. <laughs> Not necessarily in the same book, because sometimes we can't get in the same book or on the same page, mm -hmm. but can we at least be in the same store? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that doesn't have to, like, I want to say, because I think some people get scared, like, if we do it that way, won't we be living these separate lives together, you know? And it, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not the same thing because the scenario of living the separate lives in the same house has to do with a lot of disconnect between you and your spouse, lack of communication, lack of understanding each other, who you are, how you work. But if you have that understanding and that connection, then you're really operating as a partnership and a team. And it's not a separate thing. 
Um, it's a beautiful thing to have the space to operate in your strengths and to know that you rely on each other for that and that there's an acceptance there. There's not a tolerance of who you are, or what you do. There's an acceptance and an, an embracing of who you are and what you bring to the table for the marriage and for the household. And that's completely different. And so I just, just in case folks were thinking that I wanted to bring y'all back ladies to this, it's not the same thing, you know, so that you can start to lean into that for yourself in whatever way that that looks like for you. This is so juicy. <sighs> It's, it's a continuous work. And so we don't want you guys to think that, oh my gosh, I need to do, write down all these tips and get them done over the weekend. Mm -mm. That's not how that's going to happen for you. <laughs> you know, it takes time, again, because you're dealing with another human being in their own set of belief systems, perceptions, triggers, traumas, et cetera, et cetera. And so things may not always move how you want them to move. Even if you take one minor step to do something different, to go towards your ideal of what you want your marriage to look like, then that's taking a step forward. And it doesn't matter if it takes you five years or 20 years to get there. If you're with somebody that's willing to take this step-by-step -step journey with you, then ride it to the wheels fall off. Like for real, for real. Because you're, you're not going to... Um, there was this meme going around. Uh, I want, somebody was like, I, basically, I want a dude that has dealt with all his traumas and stuff like that. And so I laugh at this because I'm like, don't nobody deal with all their traumas. <laughs> like, where are they finding this dude at? Like, for real. And then somebody else posted underneath, like, you know, no, what you want is someone that is actively working on healing. Right. those traumas and those triggers and that are is willing to put in the work with you as you work through and deal with yours mm -hmm. and that's all this marriage thing is like he's not gonna ever be perfect you're not ever gonna be perfect um you have to you have to ride the wave and if you got somebody willing to ride the wave with you that's 90 percent of the battle right there <laughs> if not a hundred but you know that's the biggest part of the battle is that most people I'm, i admit i love stuff fast i'm like ricky bobby i want it to go fast i want it to be fixed fast i want i want everything fast and so for me to be married for almost 20 years everybody who knows me is surprised because i used to <laughs> what? What? everybody is surprised because when oh god you made it girl what i used to date guys it was like oh yeah, he not, okay, whatever. He, you know, he did this, he, like, and I wouldn't put in the work, like, I wouldn't put in the work. Yeah. And if you got somebody that's willing to put in that work, baby. Yeah. You got it. That's, yeah. that's your battle right there. Yeah. So where can they find you? Where can you find me? Out here in the um, Well, I'm Imani Aisha on all social media. I am most active right now on IG, so you can come and shoot me a message, but um, I think I sent this to you. So for those of you who know, you want to lean into understanding yourself better, understanding how you and your spouse communicate, so you can start to avoid some of the common conflicts that you are most likely having in your marriage. Um, there's a little something, something for you um, that shall make Yes. Uh, how to avoid. Okay, awesome. Yep. How to avoid the six common habits that keep you arguing with your spouse. And it's just a free guide for you on my digital home. And yeah, you know, connect with me. I'm, I'm here for actually connecting with people. I do talk to strangers. So, you know, feel free. And yeah, we... we Even we if you just stalk her on like Instagram and Facebook, her videos are fantabulous. And no matter what stage you're at in your relationship, there's always something to glean from it. Because mm -hmm. there's always work that needs to be done it is continuous process so yeah, myself um cool. this is the work we signed up for <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's um her stuff is really really her content again no matter what stage you're at in your marriage these are tips and strategies that you that will make you think and i think that's i feel like that's the purpose of a lot of your things is to make you think is to make the reader or listener think about huh how does this look and not necessarily to try to change you or give you a quick fix right. but it's the questions that she asks that 
make you think about your next moves or how things can shift for you. Mm -hmm. So definitely check it out. No matter what stage you're at in your marriage, if you think everything is perfect, one day it won't be, get you some strategies now. And even if it's a little rocky, checking it out, getting downloading the guide and perhaps setting up a meeting with her later just to see where you are and maybe what can be done to improve it. Yeah. If that's what you're looking to do and knowing that there's help out there for those of us in the Mary space, that's just not all fluff or, you know, nothing against Jesus or just <laughs> ask Jesus. Like I have a problem with just ask Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I meant you start that off like, look, nothing against Jesus. Nothing against Jesus, because you know they'll come for me. Right. Nothing against Jesus, but yeah. beyond the pray. Yeah. So these are tools beyond praying. These are the action steps that Jesus be talking about. Right. For you Faith to, without works, y'all. Come on. Faith without works is D E A D D. Yes, yes, yes. But it was a pleasure being with you today. So happy, Stoke. Thank you so much for giving me of your energy and your time. I am grateful and appreciate that. Thank you all for joining the Get Your Life show. Join us next week. And you all have a fabulous day. Remember, love yourself, love your family, love your business in that order. And I will catch you next week. Bye.